Hi, and what we've got in this example is to prove by induction that for n being any positive real integer, that the sum of r times r plus 3, going from r equals 1 to n, equals a third n times n plus 1 times n plus 5. So, if you'd like to give this a go, just give you a moment to pause the video and come back when ready. You can check your work solution with mine. Okay, so let's see how you've got on. Well, with induction, what we've got to do is show that it's true, first of all, when n equals 1. And what we do is we take the left-hand side here, so we'll just say, therefore, the left-hand side. Well, that's going to be the sum of r multiplied by r plus 3 going from r equals 1 to 1. And all that's going to be is just substituting 1 in here. So you're going to have 1 multiplied by 4. And clearly that's equal to 4. If we take the right-hand side now, if we substitute for 1 in here, OK, when n equals 1, what we've got is 1 third then of 1 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 6. And what we have here is that we still get 4. So it's therefore true when n equals 1. OK, so true for n equals 1. Now we go on to assume that it is true for some particular value of n. So we'll say assume true for n equals k. K is a positive integer, right? And if we assume that it's true for n equals k, what we're saying is that, therefore, this summation, OK, let's just put it in, it's the summation r going from 1 to this value k of r multiplied by r plus 3 is going to equal, well, in place of n, we've got k. So it's going to equal 1 third k multiplied by k plus 1 multiplied by k plus 5. And what we're going to go on to try and show is that it's going to be true for n equals k plus 1. What I'm hoping to show is that when n equals k plus 1, this summation, we'll just write it in, of r times r plus 3 going from r equals 1 to k plus 1. What I'm hoping to show is that it's going to equal a third k plus 1. And then we'll have k plus 1 here plus 1. And then here we'll have k plus 1 plus 5. So that's our target. And to do this type of thing when you've got summations, what we do is we always take the first k term. So we say that this is the same as summing r going from 1 to k of r, r plus 3. So that's the first k terms. And then we've got the k plus 1 term. And the k plus 1 term will be when we substitute k plus 1 into here. So it'll be just k plus 1 multiplied by k plus 1 plus the other 3, so k plus 4. Now if we just continue, so what we've got now is that the sum sigma are going from 1 to k plus 1 of r multiplied by r plus 3 is equal to, well, for this value here, we know that it's equal to a third k, k plus 1 times k plus 5. So we'll put that in as a third k multiplied by k plus 1 multiplied by k plus 5. And then to this, we add the k plus 1 term which is this one here, k plus 1 multiplied by k plus 4. Now we need to tidy this up, and 
Remember I said that what we need is a third at the front here and we're expecting to get k plus 1 in place of the n here. So I'm looking across here and I can see that I've got a third, well I'm going to force a third out the front. I've got a k plus 1 in both terms. But let's force the third out as a common factor. So we'll put a third there and then k plus 1. And then if we have a square bracket inside for this first term we're just going to have the k and the k plus 5 k k plus 5 and we've already taken a third out here so we need to multiply this by 3 and then we're left with the k plus 4 All right so we've got that and what I'd want to do now is expand the terms inside the bracket there so we've got our third k plus 1 at the front here and if we expand the brackets and group up like terms I can see I've got a k squared here I'm going to have 5k and a 3k here so that's going to be 8k and then we're going to have the three fours which are the 12 okay so we'll put 12 there now I can factorize this quadratic factor so we're going to have a third k plus 1 and then the quadratic factor factorizes a couple of brackets here what have we got we've got a k a k and a two and a six that will do us a two and a six okay so now i can see that we're nearly there because we can we've got one third k plus one for this next bracket i would expect to see k plus one plus another one in other words k plus two and I've got that here. But let's just show it off as k plus 1 plus another 1. All right? And in the next bracket here, I would expect to see k plus 1 plus 5, k plus 6. And I've got that here. So again, show that off as k plus 1 plus another 5. All right? And so we've got that format that we expected. So what we can say is therefore, if true, okay, for n equals k, right, then what we've done is shown that it's then true for n equals k plus 1. Now, we've shown that it's true for n equals 1 up here, okay, so since true then for n equals 1 it must be true for the next integer up by this statement here so then it's true for n equals 2 and if it's true for n equals 2 it must be true for n equals 3 and if it's true for 3 it must be true for 4 and so on so what we can say is therefore it's true for all positive integers so in other words n is a member of the set of positive integers all right